In this episode, a killer whale becomes a killer. After years of psychological and physical abuse in captivity, Tillicum turns on his trainer, a young enthusiastic marine biology student whose final words were, I don't want to die. Hit like and subscribe. This is fierce. Tillicum was an orca. He was made famous by the documentary Blackfish, which details the life of captive orcas. It's an incredibly sad and moving insight into the terrible conditions these magnificent animals are subjected to. Tillicum was just two years old when he was ripped away from his family in the wild. He was separated from his mother and towed behind a boat towards Canadian shores to begin a life in captivity. Once he arrived at Canada's coastline, he was transferred into a tank at Sealand, Victoria, British Columbia. It was there, in a tiny pool, where he was made to perform mindless tricks in front of a fascinated crowd, day in and day out. Orcas are thought to be one of the most intelligent animals on Earth. They have highly complex social interactions with other individuals, both within their pod and from outside it. Typically, wild orcas spend their entire lives with their mothers, and pods can be made up of four generations. They form friendships and lifelong bonds with each other. They help other individuals when they're sick or injured, and they can display a range of emotions. Being held in captivity is one of the harshest forms of animal cruelty when it comes to orcas. Tillicum had no variation in his daily routine at Sealand. There was little or no mental stimulation for him. Not only that, but he was also placed in a pool with two older dominant females who would bully him. They raked him with their teeth, causing him to bleed. They bashed into him to assert their dominance, and inside such a small pool, there was nowhere for Tillicum to go. It was the start of a life of misery for the young killer whale. Kilty Byrne was a marine biology student who was enthusiastic and eager to learn. During her spare time, she worked at Canada's Sea Lamp. It was a way for her to earn extra money to help fund her studies and was an environment in which she could put her learning into practice. Working with Tillicum and the other orcas at Sealand was a rewarding and physically demanding job. Working as an animal trainer, Kelty knew the importance of building a rapport with the animals she worked with. Being assigned to train the orcas was an exciting opportunity, but she had no idea that her part-time job would one day cost her her life. That tragic day was February 20th, 1991. The enthusiastic 20-year-old had just finished a successful show with Tillicum and the two females. The packed audience had lapped it up, marveling at the speed, agility, and power of the orcas as they performed in the pool in front of them. When the audience started to file out of the area at the end of the show, Kelty began tidying up. She walked around the edge of the water, scooping out the various toys and floating objects from the surface of the pool with a net but suddenly she slipped and fell into the water. She was a strong swimmer and went to pull herself out onto the side when she felt a sharp tug on her foot. She looked down and noticed that Tillicum had hold of her foot in his mouth. Kelty let out a panicked cry as the killer whale pulled her backwards and dragged her underwater. The three whales had never had anyone in their pool before. It wasn't part of their routine. The only toys they had been allowed to play with were small plastic ones that they were commanded to push around the water to entertain the crowd. This was a new experience for them. It turned out to be a deadly experience. Beneath the surface, Kelty fought for air, but Tillicum pulled her to the bottom of the pool and refused to let go. He tugged her along effortlessly. She was tiny in comparison to his huge frame. He could have ripped her to shreds then and there but instead he wanted to have some fun. Kelty's lungs felt like they were going to burst. She could see the surface of the pool above her. It was so far away, she didn't know if she could hold on much longer. But then, momentarily, Tillicum released his grip on the young student and she swam to the surface. Gasping for air, she made a mad dash for the side of the pool. But the three orcas weren't finished with her yet. They were excited by this new plaything in the water. They had never had anything in the pool before that was so interactive. They were fixated on Kelty as they pushed her around and bumped into her over and over. They bit down on her, causing her to cry out in pain. 
When Kelty was just feet from the safety of dry land, they grabbed her once more and pulled her backwards. Horrified onlookers heard her cry out, I don't want to die, as she was dragged underwater again. Staff rushed to the pool. There wasn't a specific safety protocol for this kind of event. It had never happened before, and trainers weren't allowed in the water with the whales at that time. They threw fish into the water in an attempt to get them to release Kelty. They hit a bucket on the side of the pool and slapped the surface of the water to try to distract the orcas, but it didn't work. They shouted their recall commands, but none of them responded. Fellow trainer Karen McGee threw a life ring toward Kelty as she resurfaced once again. Kelty made a desperate grab for it, but the orcas kept her away. The youngster screamed out Karen's name, begging her to help, but Tilikum and the two females, Nutka and Haida, kept her from grabbing hold of the floating buoy. They knew what they were doing. They knew she was in distress, and still they kept dragging her underwater and pulling her around their pool like a plaything. She was at their mercy. With the orcas weighing in excess of six tons, the young competitive swimmer was no match for them as they tugged at her again and again. When Kelty resurfaced a third time, she no longer moved. To the shock of her colleagues, it was clear that she was dead, drowned by three captive orcas. She had been stripped of her clothes and floated on the surface covered in bites and bruises. She was the first person to be killed by a captive killer whale in history. It sent shockwaves across the world. It took two more hours before staff at Sealand could retrieve Kelty's body from the water. It was incredibly traumatic for staff and emergency responders to watch the orcas drag the body of their deceased colleague around the pool. But the orcas played tirelessly with her until eventually they released her and allowed staff to scoop her out with a huge net. She had drowned just feet from the edge of the pool and in front of her friends and colleagues who were powerless to help. It had been a terrible mistake, but it had been one that could have been avoided. Paul Spong, director of Orca Lab who researches orcas, said that the incident was waiting to happen. If you pen a wild killer whale and deprive them of almost all mental and sensory stimulation, they are going to become psychologically damaged. The same can be said for humans treated in a similar way. Nobody could blame the whales for Kelty's tragic death. The incident had been years in the making following a decade of mistreatment. Only a year later, Sealand closed down. It never recovered from the terrible death of Kelty and serious questions were raised about the ethics of keeping orcas in captivity. Tilikum, Nuka, and Haida were rehomed. Pillicum was transferred to Orlando SeaWorld, where his captive conditions were significantly improved. But it was too late. The psychological damage had already been done to the now fully grown orca. And in time, he would strike again and again.